I know if you follow me, I talk a lot about being in the wrong relationship. And, and let me preface this by saying him loving or caring about you doesn't automatically mean this is the right man for you with the right relationship. But I do want us to understand that not every man's attempt to hold on to a woman is something sinister or, or, or toxic or negative. Well, it can still be toxic the way that you look at it, but it's not with blatant malicious intent. He generally cares. He generally feels that he loves you. And I'll tell you why I said feel. Um, and so he wants to hold on it and he doesn't want to lose you. And, and, and he, you know, values you in his life. And, and one of the big keys to understanding if this man is coming from a place of at least perceived love. And when I say perceived, him perceiving that within himself is what he's willing to do in order to make things work. So my thing is this, if you have a man who's holding on to you, but when you try to address the issues, he got excuses, he's got dismissal, he's calling you crazy, everything but actually fixing the problem or trying to fix it, then that man is clearly holding on to you for selfish, toxic reasons. End of story. But then there's that man who, again, at least either loves you or feels he loves you, and as long as he knows what the issue is, he's willing to try to work on this. And I say know what the issue is because there are so many situations where the man just doesn't know what the problem is. You haven't properly laid it out for him. He, he doesn't comprehend how you're feeling. Sometimes that is due to maybe his lack of connection with you to understand on a deeper level what's going on, but you have to make sure as a woman that you have done your part to fully lay out and explain what the concerns and the issues are and what the triggers are for you. And then you'll see how he handles that, which shows you where he's really trying to come from in his attempts to make things work. But I would also say not just in him initially trying to fix it, but the consistency in it. Because there are many toxic men who could for a week or two try to do right, but then immediately go back to their old ways once they feel like they're back, they got you back in a comfortable space, all right? So it's about consistency, but I feel in my spirit the need to tell you one thing about this whole consistency part. If you want to see consistency, you also have to make sure you're acknowledging the effort. One of the things I've seen in a lot of situations, and I'm thinking a lot about my sessions with married couples, where let's say there's been issues for a long time, things have not been addressed properly for a while. So there's been a lot of bickering, there's been a lot of back and forth. Finally, it reaches that point where they're, they're trying to get counseling, they're trying to get help. The wife says, this is my problem. Boom, 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 boom. He doesn't do this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. All right? Husband hears that. He has his beefs too, but right now he's trying to make things right with his wife. So he's like, all right, cool, I'm going to do it. So for the next two weeks, let's say, He's going hard and he's making forth the effort, right? But because the wife has gone through, and uh, this can apply to girl, long-term girlfriends, wife, whoever, because the woman has gone through an extended period of time of nonsense with this man or, or, or struggles with this man, she may now have a harder time fully trusting this is real. And in, in her mind, it's like, I need to see more of this before I embrace it. But unfortunately, your unwillingness to embrace the effort and acknowledge it makes him feel like his efforts are futile. Makes him feel like, what is the point of me doing all this if she's still looking at me sideways, if she's still talking that way to me, if, she's, if she still thinks this isn't real or I'm not being genuine? That is discouraging to that man who's really trying to make an effort. Now, yes, we can make the argument that true change does not need acknowledgement, so to speak, because when it's who you are, it's who you are. But we have to be reasonable that in relationships, when someone is trying to become accustomed to a new behavior, become accustomed to a new approach to things, it can take some time. Rome wasn't built in a day. And so you have to make sure that if someone is making the effort, you have to acknowledge it. You want to make sure you're doing your part during that time, during that process. And then, and, and my thing is this, if they're real and they're genuine, they will keep it up when you're pouring back into them in that way. If they're not genuine and they're being manipulative, they will still fall off. 
they will still go back to their old ways because your, your reciprocation, your acknowledgement will make them even more comfortable. So you're only going to expose them more by doing it. So I highly encourage you to do it. All right. So getting back to the main point here is, yes, the man feels that he loves you. And the reason why I say feel is because, listen, I've had some situations where men came to me, you know, asking me for advice, trying to figure out how to hold on to their woman, how to make this work. They don't want to lose her. And, you know, they would say, I love her. You know, she means the world to me, so on and so forth. But when we, when we dug deeper, what we found was an unhealthy attachment, not love. All right? So sometimes the perception of love is not the reality of it. As well as the fact that I am a firm believer that true connection and what I would then deem true love is a two-way experience. It is both ways. And so that's why it's important for you as a woman that you don't base your evaluation of this man, this relationship solely on his efforts and his words. Because yes, he, he can say I love you. He can even do things that show love. That doesn't mean the fuel that is driving it is coming from love. How you will determine that or how you will best determine it is by asking yourself, are you truly in love with him? Because if you're not truly in love with him, then I believe without a doubt in my mind, what you're seeing from him is not true love. It's not connection. Because again, that means it's not two ways. So he, he's pulling the, the strength to do these things from maybe fear, maybe attachment, maybe infatuation, obsession. There's other things that are actually pushing him. And this can happen both ways. You see this with women as well, trying to hold on to men that they shouldn't be holding on to. And they'll say it's love, but it's not actually love that's going on there. And that's not to devalue anyone's efforts, but it's to bring reality to what's going on in so many situations. So as a woman, you have to ask yourself, okay, do I... Feel a connection with this man? Am I truly in love with him? Because if you're not, it doesn't matter what he's doing. It doesn't matter if it's real, fake, love, not. It still says you shouldn't be there. It still means there is a place for you elsewhere, maybe by yourself for a while, and then with someone else who is truly best suited for you and you best suited for them. So we have to consider that in this whole dynamic of him not letting you go. But yes, his belief of love, and in some situations, because I didn't really talk about it too much, let's just say there actually is a connection. And let's say when you ask yourself that question deep inside, you do love this man. And, you, and again, you feel the connection with this man. But for various other reasons, you are trying to let go or you are not willing to embrace what's in front of you. Might be your own fears. It might feel overwhelming. You may have a lot of outside noise. You may have difficult circumstances that make it hard for you to uh, allow yourself to be with this man or, or to do what's necessary in order to be with this man, all right? And so he's fighting to not let go because he's feeling what you're feeling. And so if that is the situation, I'm just going to encourage you to go deeper within yourself to address the issues that's blocking you two from coming together. Because if there is a connection there and you do love this man as he loves you, I would not want those things I just mentioned to stop two people who should be together from getting together. I want to see that happen. I want to encourage those situations. There's too many people with the wrong person. I don't want, and, and, and unfortunately, I see too many people who should be together not being together right now. I don't like this dynamic. And so, again, I want to encourage you to, to face those fears, to address those issues, to do what's necessary. It doesn't mean you have to jump in it right now. Maybe you got to take a step back to get things in order, but I want you to be intentional about figuring out how you can get to that point of being where you truly belong. All right. And I have to throw in for those of you who are believers, this is why you got to talk to God. This is why you got to pray. This is why you got to figure out how do I proceed? Not what I think I should do, not what my friends, family, pastor, who, no, what does God want me to do in this situation? And I, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> I feel bad saying it, but I'm going to say it because it's hitting my spirit hard. That even counts for some of y'all who are married. Now, listen, I know some of y'all are going to be like, how dare you, Stefan? How, how can you say that? I don't, I'm not saying I'm, I'm necessarily for divorce or want divorce. But what I am saying is that a lot of people married the wrong person. A lot of people got into marriage without consulting God. And so, that, so now if you do come to God, I, I cannot rule out the possibility that you will you will have to be removed from that situation 
one way or another. That's not for me to decide. I, and, I'm not, and I don't know any one specific situation to say who this should apply to. I'm just giving you a perspective to consider and to pray about it. Let God have the final answer. I know some will say, well, why would God say that? You know, scripturally, it says, no, listen, go to God in prayer. That's it. Just go to God in prayer and really tap into spiritually what you're being led to do and what needs to happen. All right. And what your next step, not even what the overall answer is, divorce, this, no, just God, what do I need to do next in this situation? What do I do, need to do next in my relationship? And then take it from there. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. Avoid people who get mad at you for wanting the same things they ask for. I just read that quote online. I paraphrase it a little bit. But we're talking about narcissists, all right? Now listen, 